Hi, this is Alberto Lombardi, welcome to my channel. Today we will take a look at a beautiful song written by Sting and his guitar player, Dominic Miller. The song came out in 1993 and it was on the album Ten Sumner's Tales. There is actually a great video by Dominic Miller himself playing the riff. The problem is that he just plays the riff, he doesn't talk about it at all. So you might miss a few of the nuances that make this riff amazing and so moving and so interesting. This is what I will try to point out today to show you all those details. But before we move on, if you enjoy this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and leave a comment because this helps YouTube know that this video should be shown to more people. And of course, if you're new here, subscribe and activate the notifications with the little bell. Let's start. Let's take a look at the positions of the left hand. F sharp minor. E sixth. D sixth. C sharp seven, four, suspended four. C sharp seven. And let's stop right here and see what happens with the right hand because that's where the tricky parts are. The riff starts like this. And here's the first thing I would like to point out. He doesn't play the bass on the downbeat. He starts with the high note, the high A note, and then he arpeggiates the other three. And then he repeats the bass. But he moves right before the bar changes. So, on this shape, the only notes you want to play are those. Then you move the shape to the E sixth. And you play a bass on the upbeat. So, putting those two together, you have. You know what I mean, there is no bass on the downbeat. The downbeat is only the upper note, which is a third. The third chord is identical to the second, just move back to the fourth fret. So these three chords together are Here comes the part where he puts the bass on the downbeat, actually repeating the bass. He does this, he plays the D note and then the C sharp. So, then he slides back into the first position and the riff starts all over with a one minor variation, which is this chord that instead of being a simple F sharp minor, becomes a D major triad with the first inversion on the bass. One little thing that you might want to add when you switch over to the second part of the riff from here is that you might want to slide with the pinky back to the upper A note. And basically, try not to raise the pinky too much, because it's nice to hear this high note sliding up and down. As you can see, we don't have contiguous intervals uh, like we are used to on the guitar. So it's not C, B, G, C. They're all contiguous, they're all thirds. In this case, the triad is spread out. Like in classical music, if you arrange strings, you try to expand the triad and uh, spread it on different octaves to make it sound bigger. That's what's happening here. 
So as I was saying, the only difference the second time around is that instead of playing the F sharp minor as the first chord, he plays this D chord, but everything else is the same. Let me point out that the fingerings that Dominic uses are a little different. When he gets to this position, instead of barring, he does this position here, which is a bit tricky to do with a normal scale size guitar, because he always uses a very short scale classical guitar to play this riff. This position is a little easier but it, there's a very easy workaround, you just have to bar. That's what I do, it makes it very easy to play instead of stretching your hand like this. Which is something that you cannot, unfortunately, do on the next chord, which is this one. That is a little hard to grab at first, and is actually a D6 again with a different position. It's actually the same we encounter in the first part of the riff, but it adds an A note, an upper A note, which makes it very much harder to grab. And this is the movement that he does with the right hand. So let me play this second part slow for you. Once we're here, we go into this A chord. So we play the low A before the beat, like we did in the beginning, and on the beat we do this hammer-on. From the first to the second finger. This too is quite a stretch with a normal size guitar. If you want to add a little nuance, in between these two chords, there is a ghost note that makes it very rhythmical. Did you see what happened? Here, he puts a ghost note with his first finger that prepares for this. Right before the low A. That is very rhythmical and interesting. Then we move to a C-sharp position, just three notes arpeggiated like this. So let me play this bit for you. Then we go into the final part, where it goes into this D-shape and he plays a D, an A, and an F sharp, probably with his thumb, his first finger, and his third finger. And then he does this melody just by moving the pinky around. Then we move to this position here which is basically a C sharp 7 suspended 4 chord, but since we have the C sharp singing, it's better that we have a fifth in the bass, and that's what's happening here. This is something that comes from classical music. If you have the root singing, you want to use an inversion on the bass. And then again, just by moving the pinky, he plays the last bit of the melody. And then he just plays an F sharp minor. This little melodic part doesn't happen on all the song. It sometimes plays it, sometimes just leaves the voice singing without intruding. Thank you. 
this is the part I'm talking about. Sometimes it's just... Okay, that's it. But before I play the riff very slow so you can play along, please remember to give this video a thumbs up, comment, subscribe and activate the notifications. Also, if you're interested in my tablatures and lessons, you can check my website albertolombardi.com and also I've been live streaming for quite a while every Monday here on YouTube and on Twitch. So thank you very much for joining me. Let me play the riff very slow for you and I will see you next time. Ciao! One, two, three. Thank you.